all the time. So, why don't we just sit around and talk? Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us why you're here? Hi, I'm Robert Bernardo, and I came to see you, Bill Shatner, because we're we're part Robert of the Will Bernardo, part of the Will Shatner fan club. Well, wait a minute, Robert Bernardo, you've been coming. I put on a, a horse show called the Hollywood Charity Horse Show every year, and I started almost 35 years ago when I saw Thunder the Might Be. Yes, the little my baby on a horse. She didn't have any arms. She had one leg. She was holding the reins with her toes. And there's a person on either side, a person leading the horse. And what they were doing with her, it's called horse therapy. And they were giving her hippotherapy. And, and she had the greatest smile on her face. One happy, beautiful six year old. I don't know what's happened to her since, but she's in her 40s now. Oh. So I don't know what her fate is. But that little child moved me so much because my three kids are healthy. And, you know, we had this young lady here, uh, Paige, and you can see how twisted her body is. She's responsive. She answers questions. But all she can do is squeal. So she is locked up. I don't know whether they know the level of her intelligence, but imagine having like Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, so uh, just now that I'm on that subject, there's a guy by the name, the actor by the name of Mitchell, what's his name, he played in Star Trek. One of Star Trek, his last name is Mitchell. Young guy, young good looking guy. Oh, can you remember Kathleen? <laughs> Your assistant is not here, I guess. So, he got ALS. Oh. So, I was doing an, an interview show, huh. and uh, I heard that he had uh, ALS. And I, was, I, I would interview people about the show. The name of the show was called I Don't Understand. It was a half hour interview show. I had the best time. I would talk to anybody about subjects I didn't know, which is everything. So I said, can I talk to you? And at that time, his ALS was bad, but it, it still talked. And I said, what I want to interview you about is what is it like facing death in this slow, torturous process? And he said, I want to talk to you about it. And so we set up the camera. It was... Uh, on Zoom. So he was in his house in a wheelchair and he was talking about his kids and leaving life because he's doomed. Like um, Stephen Hawking. You've, we all remember the picture of Stephen Hawking like this, but what you don't remember, or may not, is what he was like when he was young. He was this bright, you know, slim faced thing. And the thing about Stephen Hawking was his bright blue eyes and the intelligence behind his bright blue eyes. And I was able to interview him, uh, Stephen Hawking about something else. So here I was interviewing uh, Kathleen. Yes, sir. What was Mitchell's, the actor Mitchell that I interviewed? What, oh, there you are. Where, where, what was his first name? Kenneth. Oh, Kevin Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell. Kenneth. 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 Kenne
cancer. Oh. So my, I attempted to comfort her because the whole family turned to help her and expressed their love for her. And all those minor arguments that people have in a lifetime meant nothing in the, in the great importance of her life. She's going to be all right, but she was facing breast cancer. And I said to her, because now all this love is pouring on her, assuaging her, and I said, you're on an adventure in which a door is closed for you, but another door is open, and you have the opportunity now to to be so aware of how precious life is and be aware of everything. This will be the gift you have that cancer has given you. And she's going to be well, so I, I wasn't being uh, morbid. I was trying to be intelligent. And Kenneth Mitchell, laughing and crying. I'm going to do a song, I think it's a song, from uh, my album tonight. But the name of the uh, the song is I Want to Be a Tree. I read somewhere that really appealed to that you cremate, you put it in a, or a bag, and you plant a tree, and the tree will grow using your, your nourishment. And that's what my song is about, I Want to Be a Tree. So I sent him, Kenneth Mitchell, a tree, and he's planted in his backyard. And that was several months ago, maybe even as much as a year ago. I saw him at a Star Trek something. And now he couldn't talk. His vocal muscles had gone, and now he was beginning to do that thing that, that, that I don't have time to talk to you about, about Stephen Hawking. And he had a little electrical thing on his cheek, the only muscle he could move, so he would go like this and spell out what he needed to on his computer and then move the, whatever you call that, the arrow, yeah. it's not, that's not the mouse, what do you call the arrow? Like a cursor. The what? Cursor. The cursor. cursor he yeah. moved, he was able to move the cursor by twitching his cheek, not anywhere near as much as I have. He would, he would twitch it like this. That was the limit of his muscular control. And spell, and then I, I had sent him, I'll finish the story and that'll be all I can do. The, he, he, we had asked him for an interview. He wrote back, yes, you can interview me, but uh, send me the exact question. So we sent him the questions, which he then answered uh, laboriously, I guess. And when we got to Cambridge, I had to ask exactly the questions on a card. He was sitting there, I was saying, Card and he would answer. But when he said, I, 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 I'll accept that interview, he said, I want to talk, I want to ask Shatner a question as well. And so when he answered whatever the questions were that I asked him, I said, uh, Dr. Hawkins, do you want to ask me a question? What did you want to ask me? And very painful. He types out, and I'm watching this, what is your favorite episode? <laughs> One of the great minds of the 20th century. <laughs> so that's all I have time for. It's a pleasure to see you and oh. talk to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so Let's much. Speak again. Can I tell you, five years ago, I was dying. And I had to do a Kobayashi Maru. I got a double lung transfer five years ago. A double what? Double lung transfer. No kidding. That's me. Oh, you can You mean you have somebody else's lung inside you five years ago? Yep. Yeah. How are you doing? So far, so good. Can you walk up and down stairs? Yep. You can uh, breathe? Yep. I, I, I talked to Aubrey Powers uh, at the Explorers Club event. I told her I'll be your guinea pig to fly up with Blue Origin if you give me the will and check. Wow. Well, that is a wild story. No time to examine that further. Because what I've done at uh, Ticonderoga. Right. Ticonderoga. Where, where you weren't there this year. Not this year. Uh, uh, I, will, I will, maybe 30, 40 people sitting around the control room uh, of the spaceship, the Ever 
but and we'll sit around and talk for an hour, an hour and a half about lung transplants in the future, what the future is of medicine. And invariably there are people like yourselves who are in there who are connected in some way with those skills who can offer something that it, it, it becomes more than entertaining. You reach a, it, it reaches it. Thank you everybody. Oh, I guess we don't get our, our photo off. <laughs> Maybe the photo ops later.